Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to kick off Throwback Thursdays. I feel like with the Serious Keto channel, we kind of have a routine going here in terms of video releases. On Mondays, we have the video podcast. On Wednesdays, we have a product review. And on Fridays, we have a recipe. Starting today, we are going to add to the mix Throwback Thursdays. Throwback Thursdays allow me to take an older recipe video, one that I'm proud of, at least proud of the recipe, maybe not so proud of the video, but the recipe itself is solid. But because of the age of the video, it probably predates when most of you were subscribers. So you may not even be aware that this video exists. By revisiting some of these recipes, I can go out and just check to make sure that that recipe is accurate on my website, seriousketo.com, add any tips, tricks, substitutions, lessons learned that I can share with all of you. And it also lets you see sort of how this channel has progressed over the past year or two, including how much grayer I've gotten in the past year. I foresee Throwback Thursday taking one of three forms. It may just be a quick little community announcement with a link to the video. It could be a video like this where I reintroduce you to that video and then I give you a link to that video at the end of this video, if that makes sense. And when I do that, I'll make sure to include any of those tips, tricks, lessons learned. The third possibility is if it's a recipe that I have significantly changed over the course of the last year or two, either in terms of the method or the ingredients, or just there was a massive, massive lesson learned, I'm probably going to take the approach similar to Alton Brown with Good Eats Reloaded, where he mixed both old footage and new footage together to create a new episode. So one of those three formats, my goal is to do this every Thursday, at least every other Thursday. When possible, I will try and sync it up such that the Throwback Thursday video is in some way complementary to the Friday recipe video, say a side dish or a condiment, something like that that would go well with whatever comes on Friday. Can't promise that it will happen all the time, but I'll try. This week's video was inspired by a topic that I covered on the podcast earlier this week on Easter candy. I got talking about Reese's peanut butter eggs and just started having a massive craving for peanut butter and chocolate. So what we are going to do in this video is the peanut butter chocolate crunch bar. In terms of tips and advice for this recipe, first off, I do strongly recommend using a double boiler. And while your water is boiling, you can put your coconut manna, the jar of it, into it to let it start to melt. It makes it way easier to measure. And this leads me to a common question that I got on this recipe, which was, can you substitute coconut oil for coconut manna? No, you cannot. Coconut manna is basically coconut butter. So think of like peanut oil versus peanut butter. Two totally different creatures. You do need to use coconut manna. The next tip is related to the cacao butter. When you buy cacao butter, it comes in these great big hunks, but if you put them into a food processor and grind them up, just coarsely, it doesn't have to be powder, it makes it far easier to measure out and weigh. I also checked the measurement again on the peanut butter powder. I'm using PB Fit in this recipe, and it calls for 85 grams. That is three quarters of a cup, fairly firmly packed. And that's one of the reasons why I show the weights in my videos. I just think it's a far more accurate way to measure, especially powdered type ingredients. And that brings me to my final tip slash substitution question as it relates to this recipe and the powdered sweetener that you use. In the video, I use Confectioner's Swerve. If you are bothered by the erythritol cooling effect in the mouth, you can use powdered bocha sweet. Do not use granular bocha sweet. I'm telling you right now, that stuff does not dissolve in this recipe. You wind up just basically getting this really clumpy, wet sand sort of substance out of it. So do not use granular bocha sweet. Powdered works fine. Interestingly, unlike the powdered erythritol or powdered swerve that I used, when I used the powdered bocha sweet, I did not need to thin out the recipe with additional coconut oil. So if you use powdered bocha sweet, you can forgo the extra tablespoon of coconut oil near the end. So that is it for the intro on this Throwback Thursday. I'm going to assume that you're already subscribed if you're seeing this, but you can still click that like button. And I will put the original video for the peanut butter chocolate crunch bar right up here 
I'm not sure if it auto plays at the end of this video. You might want to click it just to be sure. But wait until I say, thanks for watching.